Okay, so let's have another look at the Lyapunov's method of stability for nonlinear systems. Previously, we've made a very simple example out of a simple robot moving on a plane with a control system, but that was a linear system. Now we want a real nonlinear system. So let's prove that the pendulum is stable, so that it moves towards zero and stabilizes there. Of course, for simplicity, I will choose a pendulum in a very simple gravity field. So the most simple example of a gravity field is, of course, the moon. And not necessarily our moon, just a moon where we have a gravity acceleration equal to one meter per second squared. Because it's just one. So, I will then choose the mass for my pendulum equal to 1, and I will choose a friction coefficient due to existence of a very dense air or another gas equal to 1. 1, 1, 1. In order to simplify my equations for this system, let's say that my system has a position x1 and its derivative is x2. And the derivative of x2, so the derivative of velocity, is angular acceleration. Normally, I would use a set of equations, sinus x1 minus fmx2, like that. But due to the fact that I have just chosen also length 1, I have just chosen a very nice set of parameters, my equations will simplify for this moment into just minus sinus x1 minus x2. This is responsible for the gravity influence in my system, and this is the friction. And now I would like to prove that this system is stable. How do I do that? Let's clear it a little bit. Let's use Lyapunov's method. So, the first question is, what energies can you see when just looking at the behavior of the system? So the behavior is, if you have a pendulum, it just moves. If you start in this position, it moves left and right, left and right. If it's moving, it has a kinetic energy. So my total energy-like function for the system will be, first of all, a kinetic energy. Then, does it stop somewhere? Yes, it does. In the middle, after some time, the movement looks like this. What other system has a movement like this? Oh, a spring. If you have a spring and a body at the end of it, it starts, for example, somewhere not at the point zero. It will just move here, 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 oscillate a little bit and stop. So this is basically a very similar movement. That means I can use for the spring a potential energy of a spring. Kx squared by 2. Oh, hey, but I have already used a function like that for the previous model. Well, there will be a twist in here because this is truly nonlinear. So, I begin with the same set of requirements. I would like my function to be first of all well defined, so I would like uh, this to be always positive. So I would like to have v that is always bigger than zero except for one point. So it will be for every x bigger than zero except for zero. Because at zero, as you can see it now, I'm using proper mathematics to describe the problem. For zero, it should be exactly zero. This means I start here, but I will end here, and I should be here for eternity. So I should fall. Falling is, of course, the derivative. So derivative here, so everywhere except this point. So the derivative for x should be lower than zero for x non-zero. And of course, I need to add somewhere that, oh, I'm out of space, I suppose, that for zero, it's exactly zero. Four of them. Let's test the first one. 
I will assume that my pendulum has mass 1 and spring 1 for this part. So I have only velocity, that's x2, square by 2, plus I have only position of the pendulum, x1 squared by 2. Is it bigger than 0? Yes, it is. That's a square. That's a square. There is no chance that this is negative. Good. What about being 0 at 0? 0 square plus 0 square is 0. I'm done with two, those two. But now I get to the fun part. I have to take a first time derivative of my energy-like function, of my Lyapunov function. And I will need a bit of space for that. I need to store on my whiteboard right now every step that I will make during this derivative. Because we will be, in a moment, going backwards. So I start with a v equal to x2 square x1 square. In a moment, I'm taking a derivative. Okay, the time derivative of x2 squared by 2 is, first of all, 2x2 divided by 2, just an x2. I am taking a derivative with regards to time. Is, it, is this time? No, it's a function of time. Functions of time get the inner derivative. Again, squared by 2, x1 and inner derivative. This is the moment when I use my pendulum model. So, x2 with a dot is like this. So, I actually have minus x2 sinus x1 minus x2 squared and then I have plus x1 times x2. Oh, this one example doesn't simplify. So I am left with terms that are positive and negative depending on x1, x2. So if you were to create a plot of this function, this would actually go, depending on x1, x2, like that and of course multiplied by x2. So it fails one of my requirements. I will redraw them in a simplified form here. We are failing the requirement for derivative, lower than zero everywhere, because it's higher than zero. Oh, but the important part about Lyapunov is you have chosen, or we have chosen, these two. We have chosen them to be kinetic energy and potential due to spring. But there is no spring. There is gravity. So can I change it? Actually, yeah, you can change it. And you have to just trace what comes from which part. You can always just assume, for example, that this will simplify. If I choose a right function on the top, it must simplify. It must be stable. It's an assumption. It can be non-valid, but let's do this. And now, this will be broken equation. So, let's say that I indeed get this part and this part, but, oh, sorry, but instead of getting this, I will get here something that will simplify the first part. And I will be left later on with only this, which as we already know, this is lower than zero and at zero, exactly zero. But it's not true, it's a lie. Why? Because I have introduced this term, but I am having this one. Can I change it? Can I make it true? 
Well, you have a choice of whatever is in here. So you have a choice of whatever is here and here. So you have a choice of whatever stands here, here, only the one part of it, and in here, here, this one. You have a choice of what is here, here, and x1. Oh, see, x2 has to be constant, but this can be changed. So what if I change it here to be sinus x1? I force it to be sinus. That would mean that there is a sinus before. So that would mean that I have a sinus function here. Yeah, that's very nice, but this is the derivative. What's the reverse operation to derivation? Taking an integral, integration. So what is an integral of sinus? Oh, minus cosinus? So, this term is not true. Instead, there should be a minus cosinus in here. And then, when you take a derivative, yes, then it's true. If you start with something like this, you will end with x2 square, x2 times x2 with a dot, minus cosinus is plus sinus x1 times inner derivative x1 with a dot. Good. But we have just changed our Lyapunov function. You have to go all over again through those four. If you ever touch v on the top, you have to go through all of them. Erase and start over with a new proposal. Let's check the first term. Is it zero, uh, bigger than zero everywhere? V is x2 square. Yes, that's okay. Maybe I'll write okay. That's good. Minus cosinus x1. Oh my god, it's a trigonometric function. Oh, that will be fun. Yeah, very fun, because if you choose this function, it's minus cosinus. Cosinus starts here, minus cosinus starts here. It moves like that. And it's not bigger than zero. Again, a reverse question. If I am not happy with this function, can I force it to be a proper one? Can I make it bigger than zero? Can I push it up? Of course, I can try making it like this, but that would mean it now oscillates around the point of one. So this means this is actually a picture of a cosinus plus one, or if you prefer, one plus cosinus. Sorry, there's a minus in here. So I have pushed it up. Again, I have changed, modified my function. I start, start all over again. Is it true? The first one. Okay. The picture is now like this. Okay. Yes. This is for every point that is non-zero bigger than zero. What about zero? Zero squared minus cosinus of zero plus one. Zero minus cosinus of zero is 1 minus 1 plus 1. Yes, it is 0. For, of course, 0 arguments. Good. OK. OK. Third one. The derivative. I will, for, in order to be sure, I will go again. The derivative of this part is 2x2, x2 with a dot. The derivative of this one is x1 with a dot 
sine minus sine is x1. Then I substitute those two. So x2, x2 with a dot, x2 with a dot. Okay, plus x1 with a dot, sine is x1. So I've got minus x2 sinus x1 minus x2 square plus x2 sinus x1. Those two simplify, you are left with minus x2 square. So again, this is the same situation uh, where we have a negative function. This is minus something squared. It's a simple parabolic equation that just touches zero at zero. Good, so we meet this criterion. Touches zero only at zero, it's okay. For okays means this is a function that proves stability for a pendulum. So with this function, you can say that the pendulum is stable. That means the pendulum, this one, is stable. End of story. If you have found at least one function, it means the system is stable. If you have not, it means nothing because you can keep searching. As we did in here, you can keep modifying until it meets all four of the criteria. Okay, as a homework, try learning what is LaSalle's theorem. Because it is necessary to fully prove the stability.